Hey everyone, Kelvin here. So in my last live stream where I was building a mix from scratch, I ran into a really interesting problem with the kick drums. So I had two kick microphones, a kick in and a kick out, and individually they sounded great. But the moment I combined both of them together, the sound actually got worse. It became thin, hollow, and it had no punch to it. And so if you've had, had uh, a moment where two good sounds somehow become one bad sound, today's video is for you. We'll be talking about interference, polarity, phase, and why multiple microphones on the same sound source can either make your mix shine or make it completely fall apart. So here's what happened. Um, I've got here the mixer and the mix I had uh, on the day I was live streaming. And uh, I'll play it, uh, the song, and unmute the kick out microphone first of all so you hear it. Just a moment. Yeah, so this is the kick out microphone and how it sounds on the day not too bad for a kick out microphone sounds punchy and it's got nice low end to it if i mute that and unmute the kick in this is the kick in microphone lots of attack to it and you think when you join uh, combine both sounds they should sound really good really good here's how it sounds when i unmute both of them it sounds really hollow and and there is nothing to it but when i invert the polarity of the kick in that's how it sounds, sounds way better. What I just showed is something that happens all the time in live sound interference between microphones. Whenever two mics pick up the same sound, but at slightly different times or with opposite polarity, they don't just add together, they interact. And depending on how they interact, you can get issues like peaks and dips in the frequency response or loss of low end or a whole or distant sound and weird directionality. You can even get increased feedback. This is why sometimes two good signals can combine to form a bad signal if you're not careful. Now, there are a bunch of things that happen here, and the first we'll be talking about is polarity. If one mic is wired or processed so that its waveform is flipped upside down compared to the other, the two signals will eventually cancel out um, each other, especially in the low frequencies. And this can happen if you've got a situation where a cable is wired incorrectly or a microphone has reverse polarity because you're using two different brands of microphones or a console or plug-in flips polarity without you even noticing or simply because of how the mics are positioned. Basically, when two signals of um, equal strength but opposite polarity mates they cancel almost completely this is similar to what i had so you need to be careful with with using two microphones in say your snare drum or your kick drum or micing things with multiple microphones from the same sound source now polarity is even the simple issue here because you can basically just flip polarity and get it solved if you can find it the more common issue we see um, or I've, at least i've encountered is phase uh, if two microphones are at different distances from the same sound source, the sound reaches, reaches them at different times, and that delay creates a pattern of peaks and notches across the frequency spectrum. This is called comb fil filtering because the frequency response looks like the teeth of a comb, similar to what you can see right now. You've completely heard this before, vocals that sound very hollow or drums that lose punch when you mix all of them together or choir mics that fight each other or two kick mics that don't blend well. Yeah, what I just had. Uh, comb filtering is basically the enemy of clarity. One of the classic ways we reduce this problem of comb filtering and phase issues is what we call the three to one rule. And the rule basically says the distance between microphones should be at least three times the distance from each mic to the source. So if a mic is one foot, say one foot away from the singer, the next microphone of the next singer should be at least three feet away. This helps ensure that the direct sound hitting the second mic is quiet enough that it doesn't interfere with the first mic. So in a live sound situation, this applies to vocal groups, choir singing side by side, or choir, mic in choir with different various microphones, or drum overhead, or even audience microphone. It's a great rule of thumb where you're trying to avoid face issues. Now, let me take a talk a little bit about micing drums because this is very important. You've got lots of microphones on the drum kit and 
for example, you have uh, the snare drum closely mic'd, and then you also have overhead microphone, which are guaranteed to pick up the snare sound very loudly. Sometimes you run into issues where you do sound check, the kick drum sounds good, the snare drum sounds good, and then when you throw everything in with the overhead microphones, it starts sounding weird, and you start losing some sound, sounds hollow and things like that. This might be the issue because I've heard some, of some engineers while trying to battle or tackle this issue, they say, yeah, they put a delay in the snare closed microphones so that the um, sound of the snare drum comes into the mixing console. At the same time, it hits the overhead. So measure the distance from the snare to the overhead and put that same amount of time delay into the closed mic snare drums just to avoid these issues. So I'm just saying this because it might not be your problem. You might be fine with the way your drum sounds. But if you're having this issue, this is something worth considering. Another source of interference is reflections. Now, if your mic is near a wall or a floor or even the drum shield or any reflective surface, the mic picks up both the direct sound and the delayed reflection. That delay creates, you guessed it, comb, more comb filtering. This is why choir mics near walls sounds weird and... Uh, drum microphone near plexiglass shields can sound fizzy and even floor reflections can mess up your low end clarity so yeah we know drum drum shields are really good for reducing um, stage bleed or drum bleed on stage but they've got the challenge of then adding lots of face issues to your sound because sound bounces off these plexiglass uh, drum shields a lot and if you're not very careful with how you place your microphones in the drum, your drum mics in the drum shield, it's gonna have like lots of face issues. So why you you have the advantage of reducing the drum bleed, you have a problem with um, what you're mixing because you then have to worry about trying to uh, time align lots of your microphones to make sure you get out, get rid of comb filtering and face issues. So whenever possible, avoid placing mics near reflective surfaces or use surface, to surface mount mics that are designed for that purpose. So back to the issue I had in my live stream, the kicking and kick out mics were picking up the same source but with different timing and polarity. That combination created interference and the result was a weak holo kick. And by flipping the polarity, I aligned the waveforms enough to get the punch back. But in other situations, you might need to adjust mic placements or increase distance, or you might need to reduce gain on one mic or use time alignment, or basically remove one mic entirely. Entirely rather. If you want me to do a deeper dive into time alignment, mic placement, and uh, face coherent drum micing just let me know in the comments and uh, i appreciate you watching this video till the end thank you very much and uh, i'll see you in the next video bye for now